Absolutely. Yeah. Really good. Um, in amongst professionals that you may have come across, were there situations which one might think perhaps more extreme and the police were involved? Of course, whereas, you know, your appearance, that is a major thing, a part of anyone's life, either care or not care. You and mental health as such, whereas I've been arrested, I've told them that I was a young carer and that I had to get home just because as such I was wearing a tracksuit and I was let out seven to eight hours later with no acknowledgement, nothing done wrong because of certain circumstances I was going through and yet come home to a parent that had suffered from that and you know self-harmed as such and things like that because there is no understanding of when you tell these people these things for such as the police they're not acknowledging that just seeing from their as they're saying they're doing their job but they're not doing their job they're just trying to you know I understand put the younger generation away from certain crimes and things like that nowadays and trying to point us away and learn us from an early age but at the same time they've got to listen and not just tell people these things they've got to, you know sit down and when you arrest someone actually try and get to the bottom of it let them speak Instead of just, oh, you've been arrested, you're now done this, you've done this, and, you know, sit in this cell on your own and not speak to anyone. Where it can be lonely because, you know, you're in a place you don't know and there's people shouting and in these certain places there is a lot of older and influence. You can't be shoved into a situation where you feel trapped and that's what they do. They just trap you without giving you the acknowledgement of what you need and that, you know, we are a child, we're a minor as such in some circumstances. And they're not seeing it as that, they're just seeing, you know, you're breaking the law, you're this, you're that, when in reality they should dig deeper before they can fill that surface as such. So it's all procedure has been your experience? Yeah, they need to realise that, you know, we are a different generation to what they may have grown up in, whereas where I've grown up is different to what my nan's grown up or what anyone in this world and they're not putting that into their jobs. They, you know, everyone says you shouldn't be treated differently, but I believe you should because they, if you are, then that is different circumstances where, as I told them, I'm claustrophobic. I get paranoid in certain little rooms, and yet they didn't understand that I was still shoved into a room at an early age. They're not understanding it as an actual problem. They're kind of just dealing with it how they've been taught, and it is under... as. A lot of people say under the books where it should be using your own instinct, your own initiative instead of having to follow something all the time. The National Police Chiefs Council have told us that they accept that officers, frontline officers need to get better at looking at the backstory. Uh, they believe that to appoint specialist officers would take away from the necessity of frontline officers having a better understanding. They say there's basic training but they do accept there's a need for change in culture. What's your views on that? My view is, as I've put it, a woman, police woman, well, police woman, would have a different understanding because they would use their motherly instinct towards, you know, females and males. We are different. We have different perspectives. As I say, everyone grows up differently, having a different acknowledgement of certain people don't like being touched, some people don't like being talking to in a certain way. And they've got to understand that, you know, as you said, this person said that they need to get better, they need to start before they can get better because I don't see any sort of acknowledgement of these different cultures, these different religions, these different beliefs in fact. Whereas, you know, if you go and arrest a Muslim or someone with them cultures or background, you're not allowed to st like touch them, you're not allowed to search them, but because as such, you know, we're British, we're white, we don't have that kind of, we're Christians as such as I am, then we apparently we're fine with it, whereas it's not the fact of that. Okay. Um, during the course of your experiences, you presumably have come across social workers. Yes. Um, what sort of give us an insight into the sort of experience you've had there? I've had four different social workers, and every single person I've seen, I've only had to seen up to twice. They say to you. You know, they get involved into your home life saying, oh, your parents are a bad parent because they're not doing certain things. But then when you actually look deeper into it and, you know, I've had certain ones take me out just to get me away from the home to see what I'm like away from the family. And you tell them every single thing they want to hear. 
it go down on a piece of paper and then that's kind of all it is really. You don't get any, oh, you've left into a deep hole where you can't get out of because you want to know these things. Whereas, as I said, with violence, they say, oh, you shouldn't be in the household, we should take you away. But they're not dealing with the bigger problem. They're just trying to put you in different places so they can you know, get the paperwork over as such and not acknowledge it into the sense of there's a bigger picture of what's going on. They're just kind of circling a certain thing, as they say, like a Where's Wally book. They circle the thing without looking anywhere else first. And then that's wrong because families are destroyed. You know, people are taken away because they're young carers and they're going through certain abuse. And some senses, yeah, I agree with it because there's certain people that should not be able to. But then they're not looking that it could make people's mental health worse, not just the parent, but the child. And, you know, people grow up with difficulties, but then at the same time they should realise that we're not all going to be the same need. We all need different things and it is being treated differently. We need to, instead of just everyone's the same. I mean, everyone's grown up within schools. Never treat someone differently because we're all the same. Never be an individual as such. But it shouldn't be that. We are all individuals. We all have our own things. And the way I cope is I... I like to be in control of something because most of my life all I've had to do is follow other people's what they're saying. So my piercings and my makeup and things, they're my cover up to what I can be in control of. Whereas other things you can't control. And that's difficult to balance it. The government has made great play on the since the Care Act and the Children and Families Act came in of a whole family approach, a concept where Adult services social workers and children's services social workers work together in a team with the whole family, not just looking at, in your case, you, but also looking at what else is happening. What's your experience of that? I've had a certain amount of people that have tried to sit my whole family down and get us to speak, but it didn't work out because we had our views, we said what we wanted to say, and then they walked out the door. Most people don't understand is... What happens while professionals are in the house can sometimes be faked. You know, you, you're not getting the full under stories whereas you could bug someone, put a, a microphone in someone's house and you'd hear it all. But then if someone comes in the house you could act, you know, someone different and they're trying to balance it onto, oh, this is what we've seen, so this is what we'll go by, whereas not as this is what they're trying to perceive. You know, families perceive professionals because they don't want to, people to get involved, they don't want their children to be taken away. Because it is a fine line of, you say something, then it's a major problem, but yet they should be focusing on whatever you say, we will deal with, not whatever you say, we may take it to so and so, we may take it to him, you won't get an answer. Don't speak to people and say that without, you know, action speak louder than words. Never promise to help people and to get involved, but then say you can't do anything. Because that can make people worse and make people think that they haven't got anyone. And they are lonely and, you know, nothing's going to happen. Why do you think they walked out? Because they don't know what to say. <laughs> they have no, you know, they're told, go to this family's house, have a, a mediation of their families. But that's the, all they're told. They're not told to kind of just leave it like that. They kind of go and then it kicks off in the household because you've now opened up to everyone, told each other what you think, but like I said, actions, there's no actions, it's just speaking, and you can't get anywhere with just words, you have to have actions to prove these things. Much, much play is made amongst professionals since the two acts came in of checklists, form filling, feedback forms, and numbers of other forms. Did you get any sense that it was a form-filling exercise yeah. that these people came in and not actually talking to you and actually finding out? A form where as such, I feel like recording's a lot better because, as you say, you can't get the emotion, you can't get the person to speak, and you can read a piece of paper, and as you say, I'm dyslexic. I read something, it'll go out of my head. Whereas some of these people could have the same thing where they go home to their humble little lives, they may have problems there, they're coming to these places, these people's homes, and they're not understanding that 
you can't just say something and leave it within the fact of it's, a, it's on a piece of paper, you know, we have to wait for this to go through. No, it should be, we're calling this person, we're having a meeting with this person, we're getting it done. Whereas it's not going like that. And as I say, form filling. I can't fill out forms myself. I don't understand them. And they're not asking re real questions. They're putting it into a political aspects of what they want to hear, of what you can put into their questions. But they're not your questions. They're their questions that, you know, they're not asking the bigger pictures. As you said, they're asking what they want to know because they know if they go dig, dig deeper, they will find out a lot more than what they can put on a form. And it would mean a lot for someone to actually come up to you and ask you instead of just having to, oh, fill this form in and bring it when you can, or post it, because you're not going to see that person that reads that forms. Same with assessments, because you have to talk to someone, but then that person you've just spoken to and you've just had to you know, open up to you, go home to your home, and you worry about it, and it's on your mind but you get left like that until they can find someone and then even then, what are you going to do? It's a form, it's after a form, you have to fill in forms and you feel pressured because you want to say, no, you're not helping me, but you just want that help, so you have to keep saying yes so they give it to you. Um, at, the, at this point in recording the interview, um, I've, it's taken 10 weeks for us on the programme to not find a social worker to come and talk to us. Plenty of expressions of enthusiasm, but no one's actually said, yes, I'll do it. What's your reaction to that? Typical. It's not something that I would go, well, really, because it's not surprising. Because, as you say, you could interview one social worker or two social workers, but yet they're not going to give you their true opinion. They're going to give you what they've been told to say, because you have to contact, obviously, the agency then they get someone but they obviously before then they have a briefing you know don't say this don't say that where they should be saying what they think instead of what they've been told to say because it's like a puppet no one's a puppet you should say how you feel if you're on a certain job you should use your own initiative as i said not just because you're getting paid to do it you should want to listen not because you have to listen so it's the aspect of social workers ignoring the fact of, you know, it's a different problem altogether with young carers. They haven't just got to put people in homes, they haven't got to move them from their family. They can actually work with them to make it stronger. And that's why I believe they're not saying anything because they haven't got anything to say. You know, they can say something, but they're not going to change. They're not going to back it up. And that's why they can't say anything because they've got no action to do it. They've got no want to do it. And you have to do to want to do something. You've got to have that insensitive in your mind, and they're not having that. Can I just break the thing? 